All right. Sorry, you guys, that, that took a minute. Thank you for coming back. I'm going to bring Ali back on. Okay. Boom. Hi. Hi. We did it. Yeah. Um, thank you for, thanks for coming back. Yeah, of course. Um, you guys, the only bummer is we lost all your questions. <laughs> oh, so, gosh. So if you don't mind resubmitting your questions, we'll, we'll definitely get to a few of those. Uh, again, there's a question mark icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, Ali, I thought about one other question I wanted to ask before we get to questions from these folks. I feel like so many people loved the story of your comeback with the national team mm -hmm. of being away from the US team that that so many people felt you belonged with all along. And it was two years, right? Um, so two years goes by and then and then suddenly you're back. Um, and I feel like, especially for people who are fans of you and, and for me as a, a friend as well, like. I, I was so excited and happy for you. And I wonder kind of as it relates to mental health and identity, I wonder what what that time away was like. And if, had you never gotten the call back, if you, if you feel like you could have had peace, I know that's, we could probably talk for an hour, but just oh, I wonder, yeah. I feel like so many people can relate to having a dream, losing a dream, something ending prematurely. Um, and I just wonder if there's anything you'd want to share from from that time, if hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, um, complete sense. I think I really struggled through that time. I don't, you know, being fired from my job and, you know, not really given a reason why it was really difficult to leave a relationship. Like, I have that separate. Um, but understood that, you know what, this is me and I'm going to be the alley no matter, you know, if I'm Oh, sorry. Oh. I think we might be, I think it might be, I think it might be frozen. Can you guys hear her? Um, I know. Sure. Ali, I can't hear you. People are, oh. Can you hear me? Yes. I, I, okay, I can see you and hear you now. People are blaming Orlando okay. Wi-Fi. I mean, it probably is. I didn't. Because every time I get on Instagram Live, it's so poor. Maybe it's just my house. <laughs> um, sorry, guys. Um, I, yeah, I just really quick, no. like, I really struggled through that time and I, you know, I had to figure out what else I wanted to do and things that I was actually really excited about and really passionate about, I was able to then finally do because, you know, my life kind of took a turn and, or my career took a turn, but that didn't stop me from being the same ally that was always there. Um, I was like, you know what, like, if I want to be in the World Cup, I'm going to work my butt off um, to be back and I'm going to be that same alley for my club team as I am for the national team. There's no difference. So I'm going to work just as hard. Um, and I'm going to be ready. So, you know, if they need me, then I'm going to show up and I'm going to do my thing. And, but I, I did go through a really dark time, but it also led me into other things that I've wanted to accomplish and were really passionate about was getting my coaching license or opening up AKFC with my camps and clinics and yeah. doing other things that I hadn't been able to do in 10 years. So it was nice, actually, to kind of shift that attitude into more of a positive experience and yeah. and continue to just be me and work hard and hope for the best. That's so good. All right, so we'll we'll do a couple questions. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you for your questions. Um, this is a good one. This was the first one I saw. Do you ever feel pressure advocating? Um. Well, I thrive under pressure, no matter if it's advocated or not. I feel, um, I feel very good and that. Yeah, I, I feel as like a public figure, it's really, um, it's kind of like having our brands, it's really well thought out and it's intentional. 
So mm -hmm. I feel like each of us are really fighting for um, issues that we really believe in and fighting for people that we that don't look like us. Um, and I think that's really important to continue to advocate for those who don't have a platform and can't speak up. So I think it's yeah, there's a little bit of pressure, but it's something that I enjoy doing and that I feel like we all thrive in. And I think I want to continue to use my voice and use my platform for good and um, to speak for those who don't necessarily have that same platform and voice. So. No, that that's so good. I'm, I'm digging through. There's so many good questions. Um, who, who are some of your heroes? Oh, um, I would say, I would say my brother is one of my heroes because he's just been through so many struggles in his life and has continued to succeed and come out on top and to look uh, at life in such a different perspective than I do. And it's really helped like me figure out what I want to do in my life. So I think he's my ultimate hero. Yeah, that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. um, a few people asked, um, and I think whether it's up to you what you share, but just what coming out was like for you. Yeah, it was um, exhilarating. It was nerve wracking. It was, um, I had this feeling of just like being unsure. Um, but I know that Ash and I, I guess it's this. I mean, I never was really hiding from my friends and family for a long time ever since Ash and I had been together. So I guess it was like a slow coming out story. Um, but publicly, I think when we announced that we were engaged was something that was both like, okay, we have to look at this now as like, we're coming out together, but we're also coming out as individuals. So, you know, it was like a big deal. And I think that was really exciting for us because it was kind of like, we felt so free and just so honest and it was really raw and it was us. And I think it was perfect timing. Um, and then... Yeah, I mean, us just being ourselves and living our life and just sharing it with the world was so freeing. Like we could give everything we have now to everyone in our lives, our friends, our family, our teammates, our um, bosses, um, our coworkers. Like just now we just feel like this is me and this is what you get is, is yeah, what you see is what you get basically. So yeah. that was really freeing. There were a bunch of forms of that question so I know that's one that really resonates with people I wonder if someone is they're not sure if they can come out if they're not sure if they can share that part of who they are if they can be honest um, they're afraid of the response they might be met with I wonder what advice you might have for someone in that place yeah um you know, it's, it was really difficult for me. I feel like you have to do um, what's right for you and what you feel in your heart. Um, don't feel pressure from anyone else to do anything. Um, and I feel like you have to surround yourself with people who are going to support you. And knowing that all of my friends and family and teammates like had supported us, um, especially Ashlyn's family, I think that was more encouraging for us because we knew that they had our back and they, they were always going to be there no matter what. Um, and I think that's something that's really nice for us because, you know, if, and also like we actually didn't really care what other people thought of the yeah. family. I mean, I, I, I don't really care about what a lot of people think yeah. um, of how I live my life because that's just us and, and, you know, to each their own, right. People can sure. choose how to live their life the way they want. So I guess I would just say, do what you feel is best. And also just have that support system around you. Um, and if you don't, then um, find people who are like-minded and who live their life similar as, as we do and just find that support system. I think that's really key. That's so good. I like this one. Describe Ashlyn in three words. Oh, gosh. Okay. Beautiful, uh, particular, and I would say really funny. Yes. She's very honest, too. I'm oh, yeah. A, that's a good one. That's giving a you good a fourth. One. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. Very honest and raw. Yeah. 
All right, maybe one more. Is that cool? Yeah, one more. I'm good. Okay. You guys, there's so many good questions. So thank you. <laughs> we'll have to do this again. Oh, I would love that. How important, important was mental with... health to deal with? The... Oh my gosh, that was the hardest thing. Um, For so... people who don't know, will you talk about that injury as well? Yeah, so I, I got injured. Um, I was coming off of the 2011 World Cup, um, played every minute of every game into our Olympic qualifying tournament in, in January that year, in 2012. Um, we were beating this team 7-0. And uh, right before the second half, which I think I was going to come out a couple minutes um, before that. And right as I, I shot the ball and unfortunately I just got tackled and one of the opponents kicked my knee in. And so I tore my ACL meniscus uh, and MCL at the time. And I immediately was just so unsure of the future and so unsure of my career and just really, really upset, but obviously try to see the good in everything and understood, okay, you know, this isn't, this isn't my time, but I will be back. And I just had to kind of go through this process mentally of like, all right, I need to do everything I can now to get back to the game that I love and to get back on my feet uh, first and foremost. And, and then we just take one day at a time. At that time I felt like, all right, uh, I'm just going to do one thing every single day that's going to make me better, um, both as a person and in order to get back out on the field. So I try to then take the negative and think and turn it into a positive um, and really focus on my recovery because I had to plan out, I, you know, if I wanted to get back or not. And if I wanted to play at the highest level again, it was going to take like a nine to five job in the re rehab center that I had to go to. So I went back to Germany at the times I was still playing there and I went to this rehab facility from nine to five every single day. And I had two sessions. And so it was like hardcore, but it was mentally draining because I wasn't around the team that much. Um, I was, you know, this was my new job to, for myself to get back uh, to be with the team. So it was, you know, and I was pretty much isolated because none of my friends from home were there. Obviously I'm overseas I'm in this new place, uh, not new, I'd been there for five years, but you know what I mean? Like I didn't really have my family or friends around. So it was really difficult. Anyway, mentally, um, because physically I could do, I could run all day, you know? Um, emotionally and mentally it took a toll. And you go to this deep dark place of having bad days and then you have good days. And then um, one thing that was really crucial during that time was just taking one day at a time and focusing on what you could control. And that was my attitude and my work ethic. And that's really what got me back. And I didn't put like an end date on anything. I didn't stress myself on that. I was like, listen, I'm gonna do this the way that I need to do it and the way my body's gonna do it because everyone's different. And I knew everyone handles injury different. So there wasn't really an end date, um, but I ended up missing the Olympics and I was just devastated um, because they won the gold medal that year. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I missed out on that and that's why, you know, I'm pushing to get a medal at the Olympics and now obviously the virus hit and it's extended for next summer and I'm just like, oh my gosh. So I am hanging on you guys. I'm hanging on the best yeah. I can. But yeah, it was a tough experience. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. We Someone popped up, someone made an entrance and I don't know if you've seen the comments, but your, no, brother, is, Kyle? your brother is here. Oh, and he asked Hi, how long I you. I love you. He, he asked how long is this story? <laughs> of course. I take that back then what and, I just said. And he said so. he can't go live with you until you get your Wi Fi fixed. Oh my god, he's in Grandma Krieger. <laughs> he's like, You're gonna be out there running with a cane and like people are gonna be like, What are you doing? Well, you know what, you youngins, you better watch out. Yes. Oh, I, I love your. Yeah. I love that. I'm so glad he's here. You should do a live with him. Oh, I'm putting I would, him on the spot. I'm all for it. Yes. I met. Well, I told you I met your brother randomly at the Orlando airport, and it made yeah. me so happy. And then I got to, I got to meet him again. I maybe at a game once or twice, but then at uh, obviously at the wedding, and it was awesome. Yeah, he's incredible. So yeah. I'm sure everyone would love him here. Kyle, you have to watch this back because we've been singing your praises. 
Yeah. So you know what? Take that. Take those comments back. Yeah, you got to be nice. Well, Ali, I want to let you go, but thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for for being here. Thank you for being so honest. And um, yeah, just thank you for sharing so much of your life and so much of your story. Um, thank you for not only supporting Ashlyn as she supports to write love, but but thank yeah. you for your support as well. Yes, I love you guys. And thank oh. you for being such a wonderful friend to us and so supportive of us. And um, and also of us playing soccer, not just as friends, but um, oh, as athletes. It's amazing seeing you in the stands every single home game. It just means the world to us. So thank uh, you. We, you know, we love going and I love bringing my family, my nephews. So it's, it's yeah. an honor. Um, well, you stay safe and healthy and enjoy the rest of your day. Say hello to Ashlyn for us as well. I will. I will. Thanks, Jamie. All right. Bye, Thanks, guys. Allie. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye. So that was Allie Krieger. So grateful to her for joining us, uh, for, for staying on longer than expected. Hello to Kyle Krieger. I'd love to have Kyle on. I'm a fan. Anything Kyle does or wants to do ever, I'm, I'm into it. Um, well, yeah, thank you to Levi the Poet and Ali Krieger. And uh, just want to remind you, the next Twiloha at Home will be Tuesday, the 26th, I believe. Chad Moses from our team will be hosting. He'll be talking to Justin from Blue October. And then I will be... Uh, doing two different live conversations, one with the Mighty on Facebook Live, 4 p.m. Eastern next Wednesday, and then on Skull Candy on their Instagram at 7 p.m. Eastern, I will be hosting a conversation with another nonprofit founder, Jeremy Jones um, from Protect Our Winters, and uh, was really honored and excited when Skull Candy invited me to do that. We're gonna keep showing up. We're gonna keep doing these. We're gonna keep having conversations, doing our best to encourage you, doing our best to uh, create a space where people can feel less alone. And so thank you for being here. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for listening, watching. Thank you for your questions. Thank you to everyone who participated in our Run For It 5K. More than 4,000 people, all 50 states, 17 countries, more than $100,000 raised. So we are grateful. And uh, yeah, it was just amazing. We could not have dreamed up such a thing. So on behalf of our team, thank you guys again. There's a new podcast episode with Renee Yoey that is out this week. Next week, we will have the podcast episode with Levi the Poet, his conversation with Chad. That comes out on Tuesday. I think that is everything. You guys, we're gonna get through this time one day at a time. Please stay healthy, please stay safe, take care of each other, and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you so much, bye.